A strong smell of tobacco and tar rose from the interior, but nothing was to be seen on the top except a suit of very good clothes, carefully brushed and folded. They had never been worn, my mother said. Under that, the miscellany began. A quadrant, a tin canican, several sticks of tobacco, two brace of very handsome pistols, a piece of bar silver, an old Spanish watch and some other trinkets of little value and mostly foreign make. A pair of compasses mounted with brass, and five or six curious West Indian shells. Robert Louis Stevenson, Treasure Island. We've all seen the stereotypical pirate treasure chest filled with gold and jewels. In books and movies, a treasure chest is just as synonymous with pirates as is a parrot, peg leg, and an eye patch. But did pirates really store their riches in these wooden boxes? Today we're going to take a look at that. First, let's talk about sea chests in general. They were wooden boxes used to store personal belongings. A chest would be stored in the crew's quarters and would be used as a table or a bench. They were typically slanted inward, which made them less likely to spill and were usually slightly lifted by wooden beams to keep them from soaking up water from the deck. A chest would also typically have the name of the owner painted on. They would have had a lock and handles on both sides. Most sea chests contained a large compartment on the inside, likely used for small trinkets or items a sailor would frequently need. Sailors on navy or merchant ships tended to not have a great deal of money or possessions. Many sailors carried all of what they owned in their hammock, which would be folded up into a bag so they didn't need a chest. A sailor could be transferred to another ship with little notice, so it made sense to them to travel light. Another concern had to do with getting the ship cleared for action. It was much faster and easier to take a hammock down and toss it to the side than to move a chest. Pirates, on the other hand, would likely spend more time aboard their ships and tended to acquire a greater amount of personal possessions. A pirate would also be in a position to rob a chest from a passenger on another ship. It's worth mentioning the typical style of a pirate chest with a domed lid would have likely belonged to someone with more money. The shape of the domed chest was designed so water didn't sit on the lid, nor could other chests be stacked on top of it. This design would mean the chest would last longer. Regardless of how the pirate managed to have a chest, it's likely the first thing he'd have inside would have been some bedding and clothing. The salt and humidity on board a ship would quickly eat away at a sailor's clothing, so a pirate would need spare shirts and pants. The pirate would also have carried a small kit to repair his clothing, usually comprised of a needle, thread, cloth for patching clothing, some buttons, and wax. The wax would be rubbed into the thread so it didn't rot when it got wet. Pirates were known to have liked to dress in clothing usually reserved for the upper class, so in addition to the typical day-to-day -day work shirts and pants, they'd store away any plundered clothing as well. The pirate may have also kept tools for working in his chest. Maybe you'd see a marlin spike, which was used for working with rope, or a sailmaker's palm used to push a needle through layers of canvas when repairing sails. Another item that might be stored away would be a spare knife, as well as a sharpening stone. It's possible a chest may have held a few extra belaying pins too. A pirate could possibly have a mug, spoon, and pewter plate stored too. We know from shipwrecks that sailors that could afford such luxuries usually marked their initials into the back of the plate with a nail or a knife so it wasn't stolen. The pirate wouldn't have carried any special knife for eating, he'd have used his work knife for that. It's interesting to note that a fork likely wouldn't have been found as they didn't become popular in most of Europe until the mid-18th century. If a pirate had robbed someone who had a fork, he probably wouldn't have known what it was for. If the pirate could read and write, he may have kept a Bible, books, letters from home, or a journal. He could also have had pens, ink, and paper either for writing in his journal or to write a letter home. If the pirate was involved with the navigation of the ship, he may have had maps or atlases as well as navigational tools like forestaves, quadrants, and compasses. Pirates would also have kept pistols in their chest as well as oil, powder, shot, and spare flints. It's possible you'd also find granados there too. This is questionable because pirates were reported to have always kept their ships ready for action, and if so, this would mean they'd need immediate access to their weapons and would likely keep them on their person at all times. Either way, it's a fair bet to say that a pirate's chest could contain spare weapons. A chest would contain any leisure items a pirate had, like small musical instruments, cards, or dice. It's reported that gambling was not permitted on most pirate ships because of the possibility of a resulting fight, but that's not to say that it didn't happen from time to time. A pirate may have also kept some tools for carving. It's likely a pirate would have also had a clay pipe and tobacco. Pirates often stole tobacco and accounts say that pirates smoke constantly. Massive piles of broken pipes are found around areas frequented by pirates. Pirates would also keep small mementos, 
personal items, and things to trade like spices, sugar, ivory, and trinkets. As far as gold and jewels, a pirate would have only carried a small amount of money because the plunder was usually kept in a central location until it was divided. If a pirate wanted some, the quartermaster who kept a list of what each pirate earned would have paid him out what he wanted and kept another list of what had been drawn out, similar to a bank. The reason for this was likely to prevent theft among the men and also to ensure a pirate didn't jump ship at the first opportunity. Thanks for watching this episode, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any future videos. As always, if you have an idea for a topic or just want to say hello, please leave a comment below.